How's it everyone and happy Independence Day to everyone out there in the United States. I hope you guys have a fun and safe 4th of July. But in this video, as you guys can tell by the title below and what you're currently looking at, I'll be doing a Blu-ray Steelbook review, of course, on DDP, Positively Living. This release came out about a year and a half ago, I want to say. I think it came out right before WrestleMania 33. So this is a pretty... Not pretty old, but you know, it's not a recent release. I recently got this off eBay for 11 bucks shipped, which you can't go wrong. You know, I want to get the steel book when it first came out, but I honestly didn't want to pay 30 bucks for it. And, um, like I said, I got it off eBay for 11 bucks, so you know, it's kind of a good thing I waited. The only unfortunate thing about it, well, it's not really unfortunate, but it doesn't have like the little slip thing that came on top of it that said like DDP Positive Living and of course the back cover and everything on it. Didn't come with it, but you know, it's not a really a big deal, it doesn't really matter to me. But without wasting any time, let's go ahead and jump right into the video with the review, of course, right here. Here's a steel book with a nice picture of DDP right there doing, of course, the pose with a diamond. So it's just beautiful, um, beautiful cover right here. Definitely like this a lot more than the regular DVD and um, Blu-ray cover. Here's a spine right there. It says DDP, Positively Living, steel book right there, Blu-ray. And of course, here's a back with just a diamond dials page logo right there and really not, not much to it. Then you open it up. Of course, here's what the inside looks like. You have disc one right there with DDP. And then you have disc two right there with DDP as well. Not really much to it in the inside. Then you take it out. Let me get this all set up. Okay, doesn't want to sit. Whatever. But of course, here are the chapters right here. Uh, here's the documentary of DDP Positively Living. So they're all the chapters. And of course, you have extra stories as well on the DVD or the Blu-ray. Sorry, I believe it's on the DVD too. But you know what I mean. And of course, here are all the matches on this one. So if you guys want to go ahead and pause it and read them, you guys can. And of course, here's this two with the rest of the matches. And then of course you have the Blu-ray extras as well. So that is the complete artwork and everything with the Blu-ray Steelbook. Um, overall, what I gotta say about this set is, if you're a DDP fan like myself, this is definitely a must-have. You know, DDP is actually the very first wrestler I ever met when I was three years old in 1999. And you know, DDP is one of those guys that he's a genuinely good person, a genuinely good person. And you know, this documentary was great. I thought it was a great set for him. I wish they would have waited though, because literally, this set came out right before he was inducted in the Hall of Fame. So I wish they would have waited a couple more months so they can include his Hall of Fame induction on here as well. So that way, it's complete. You know, to me, it's always what makes a documentary or wrestlers. DVD set complete, uh, especially for these doc types of doc documentaries where they had their beginning and they had their closure in with the, with the Hall of Fame. That's how I feel it's the complete set. But you know, I'm not complaining too much. But um, this is a very fun set overall. The matches are good. You know, you had some uh, some good gems with him and Sting and the four ways and whatnot. So you had some you know a handful of great matches. Uh, some that are not so good, but you know nothing really too bad. Uh, and the documentary itself is you know great as well. You know it's not a very long one, which is one of the reasons why I don't really buy WWE documentaries all that much anymore, especially considering they're only cutting down the, the DVDs. Is because the documentary runtime is literally exactly an hour and six minutes, um, which is kind of disappointing. You know, I'm a person who likes to hear things in depth, so that's why I was always a fan of the hour and a half to two hour documentaries. But to be perfectly honest, they made it work. And, you know, I had gripes with it because the Sting documentary that came out was, I believe, the first one that really came out in that, in that format, in that hour format. I wasn't a huge fan of the Sting documentary. I thought it was good, but I definitely felt like there could have been a lot more to it. But I feel like in this one, they made that hour-long documentary work. I feel like they got all his stuff in, and they, you know, pretty they went into the details of some of the stuff as well. And I thought it came out very, very well. The stories on on here, um, the extra stories aren't very long. It's about 22 minutes total in story, so I don't really get that much time. I believe in the Kevin Owens Blu-ray, the stories were actually longer than the actual documentary itself. So you got a lot more runtime in the Kevin Owens uh, documentary stories. But um. You know, not take away from anything. Like I said, this was a great side documentary. It's great. You know, I like the way they shot it, you know, with him going to his old house, him just walking around, and, you know, the ending with him getting the phone call from Triple H. That was fantastic. So I just love the whole vibe and just the way the documentary went. And, of course, the documentary starts off with talking about him as a kid, you know, him, him being born very young. Uh, not him being born very young age, but his, you know, his parents had him at a very young age. His mom was 16 when he had him. So, you know, very early on. You know, his, he was struggling from the get-go. Talked about, you know, him growing up with his dad, and his dad left him at his grandma's and mom's, so he pretty much grew up from there going forward. How, you know, he used to play football, but he got to, he got hit by a car, which, you know, had a, he had had knee surgery, which took him out of football, and he started playing basketball, and he started playing basketball from there. And then, of course, he tried to become a wrestler, where, um, you know, he actually fucked his knee up, so his knee that was already injured. So, you know, he stopped wrestling for a little bit after that, got into the bar industry, and, you know, became his own you know, nightclub promoter and is very successful. Wrestlers like Jake Snake was actually the first guy to go there and, and you know, talk, talk Diamond. And then, of course, that's when all the other wrestlers started rolling in and started, you know, going to that bar and, you know, becoming very, um, you know, getting to know Diamond Dallas Page. And talk about him becoming Diamond Dallas Page, how, you know, 
he was having a piece done on him from a radio show and he wanted to, you know, make this character up. And that's what, you know, he came up with Diamond Dallas Page was him doing that character for that, you know, one piece of him. And then, you know, the, uh, the guy wanted to, you know, the guy contacted him and wanted him to be that character. But DDP is like, well, that's just a character. That's not really me. And then, you know, that's where he got into the wrestling business again, where he started working as a manager. You know, he worked for the manager for guys like the Freebirds once, you know, after the AWA. He went to the, you know, to WCW on a limb just for an opportunity. You know, he moved to Atlanta for that, became manager of the Freebirds, worked out well. You know, he was great on there. But, um, you know, they were, they didn't like that he was getting all the attention. Uh, and then Scott Hall contacted him saying that, you know, you need to manage someone that's bigger than you. And that's how I became Scott Hall's manager for a little bit. And of course, you know, came down to him that, you know, they, they didn't want him anymore. Well, they didn't want him. It was just that, you know, his character was taken away from the wrestlers because, you know, he was such a flashy and larger than life character. He was more of a character than people he was managing. So that's, you know, they wanted to tone him down and not have him be a manager anymore. And uh, that's when he decided, you know what, I'm going to, you know, I didn't get into the business to be a manager anyways. I've gotten the business to become a wrestler. And at 35 and a half years old, I started training to be a wrestler, went to the power plant in WCW, and, um, you know, became a wrestler. And three weeks into the training, he was already on TV. You know, he started getting over. But the thing is, you know, he was still these flashy characters, you know, he was still doing the cigar thing, he was still wearing these leopard jackets and all these clothes, and they didn't like that, they wanted him to strip him away from that, and they wanted him just to be himself, and uh, that's what he became, and, you know, he started slowly getting over over time, you know, he did, of course, the bang and the diamond cutter, and, you know, people started getting really behind him, and, of course, you know, talked about how he was pretty much the first guy to get a, get under the skin of the NWO um, in early 1997, and, you know, of course, you know, leading up into his big matches with, you know, Karl Malone team up with him, and, of course, the Jay Leno match as well, uh, which, you know, there aren't good matches by any means, but they were big marquee matches at the time, and, you know, I thought, I like the Intel story about with him training with Karl Malone, you know, Karl Malone stayed at his house, they trained the power plant together to get ready for their match against uh, Dennis Rodman and Hollywood Hulk Hogan at Bash's Beach, so that was some good insight, and, then, of course, you know, talked about him winning the WCW world title for the first time, which, you know, he, I love the story of, he told Dusty Rhodes that, you know, he never, he knew he was a world champion, and Dusty pretty much told him, what the hell are you doing in this business then if you're not going to become world champion, and he gave himself the goal, five years to become world champion, and he did it in uh, four years and four months, so he became world champion in 1989 for the first time, a uh, great moment, you know, that was all his hard work and success led to that, and of course, you know, I started wanting, and then it pretty much jumped right to the end where WCW got bought, and, you know, DDP not really knowing what to do, or he was pretty complacent, but he didn't, he wasn't freaking out, he was like, you know what, this is my opportunity to go to WWF, because that's where he always wanted to be, and that's where he went, and of course, he debuted as the stalker for Undertaker, which he was not shy about shitting on it at all, he didn't like it at all, he didn't, you know, like it he didn't understand too he's like have you seen my wife like why would i be going stalking someone else's wife have you seen mine like why would i do that so i thought that was good insight and of course like by him you know winning the uh european title and him going to wrestlemania 18 wrestling there which was the exact same place at wrestlemania 6 where he was the chauffeur in the pink uh cadillac um at wrestlemania 6 and then of course you know you fast forward all these years later 12 years later and here he is at wrestlemania 18 wrestling uh, in the same exact venue where, you know, he was once a show first. That was, no, that was pretty great. You know, pretty great storytelling right there. And, of course, talked about, you know, ending his career pretty much after that. And then, you know, got into the DDP yoga, you know, talking about how, you know, he'd do yoga with his wife. And then, you know, he started doing his own twist to it. And it really started helping and benefiting him. And then, you know, it became its own anonymously, you know, when he started doing the training. And, of course, the big success story he had with that one guy, um, just blossomed and you know he has his own studio now and just ddp yoga just became this huge thing that you know he just it just organically happened and you know talked about you know him helping other lives you know getting people in the shape helping you know jake roberts and scott hall they covered that by him saving their lives essentially and um you know it just came into some really feel-good moments talking about that and of course the way it ends is with triple h calling him uh, to let him know he's being inducted in the Hall of Fame, and you can just see the emotional, um, you know, the the emotion coming out of him on that phone call, him just crying as it's happening, and telling Triple H that he loves him. Um, it was a very feel go good moment, you know, watching Triple H call him and uh, seeing that. So that's pretty much how the documentary ends. Fantastic documentary, like I said, it's only an hour and six minutes. I'm usually not a fan of those short time spans because I feel like you can get a lot more. But, you know, WWE production is so top-notch, and they definitely were able to showcase Diamond Dallas Page in a fantastic light in that in that time period. And, you know, it worked out. I thought it was a great documentary, like I said. You know, just Diamond Dallas Page, like I said, is most genuine people you'll meet in wrestling. You know, just the, the moral of the story is hard work. You know, he put the hard work in, and he saw results. It paid off. It You know, he put in the work, and, you know, it rewarded him. 
and that was a moral of the story as well is you know you don't give up you put the work in you will you will be rewarded it won't you know you it won't nothing will not happen to you if you put the work in it'll happen and that's exactly what happened down Dallas page he was told you know what you're 35 years old hiding in the wrestling you know this is when people's ending their careers not starting their careers you're never going to make it and what happened he became one of the biggest stars in WWE history and a world champion and a WWE hall of fame out of it so nothing more respect for ddp tremendous set like i said you know you get a lot of good stuff matches in here are good as well you know disc one um you kind of get early stuff you know his matches with eddie guerrero was good for the u.s title you know the match with uh with uh, mark star was a squash but that was the angle where the nwo tried to recruit him uh match with macho man randy savage which is great you know him and hogan were you know, pretty much ending a big wcw versus nwo brawl so not really much to it him and kurt hitting was good uh him and ravens in the ravens rule match was really good as well uh but this two's where the the real fun stuff come in if you ask me you know of course i mean you have the two shit tag matches with him and uh malone and jay leno but that's you know those are uh, big marquee matches at the time so that's why they're on there the match with goldberg which is arguably goldberg's best match ever um you have of course his first title win at spring tampede in the four-way match where he pinned uh flair in the middle of the ring to win the championship which is awesome great match right there him and pay uh him and sting where sting wins it but um that was a great match that was actually probably one of the best nitro matches of all time uh just a fantastic match right there then of course you have later on that exact same night he wins the title back in a four-way match so don't know what the thinking was there and, of course, you have him and Kristen in WrestleMania. And the Blu-ray extras, honestly, aren't anything that spectacular. Uh, like, the Battle Brawl match is absolutely horrendous. It's a very, very boring Battle Royal. Uh, him and Brett is is fine. Uh, him and Jeff Jarrett, it's only on there because that's his third and final title win. So, that's why it's pretty much on there. So, the Blu-ray extras, aren't, honestly, aren't anything that spectacular. But the matches, like I said, are pretty damn good. Like You got some great matches, you got some good ones, and you got some not-so-good ones. But nothing really too terrible besides those two um, celebrity tag matches. But, yeah, definitely recommend getting this if you guys can. You know, you don't even have to get the steel book. You can get the regular Blu-ray. Or if you just want the DVD, get the DVD. You still get equally, you know, you still get the same great, you know, footage as you get on the Blu-ray besides the extras. So, and like I said, the extras aren't anything that's spectacular anyways to begin with. So, yeah, to me, like I said, this is a must-have for anyone. Definitely recommend it. Especially if you're a DDP, uh, DDP fan like myself. Really enjoyed this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please like below. And like I said, hope you guys enjoyed Independence Day and be safe. Thank you guys for watching the video.